We started out with asking ourselves the question, how can you design a plan to address a systemic societal crisis? And, um, and the answer was by pulling together the right people, the right technology, the, the Frontiers platform, and also significant financial resources to get the job done. Uh, on the slide, you can see how we created a knowledge hub, which became an important entry point into this, into this rich set of, uh, of initiatives and, and, and content. And we also provided a, a rich collection of videos and, and other, other types of materials for non-specialists. Um, as highlighted here by the videos and the in the interviews you see on the screen. I think one basic indicator of our success is simply the fact that, that we received over 7,000 coronavirus articles uh, as submissions. And of these to date, over 2,000 have been accepted for publication. Um, and I think what you'll also see on the slide is that one point that I think it's important to stress is that we talked about financial contributions. Frontiers contributed 5 million to this project in, in the form of, 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 of waivers and discounts. The Frontiers research topic, as, as Miriam highlighted, um, has proven to be truly an ideal format for organizing the content across all areas and all aspects of the COVID-19 pandemic and its consequences. Um, these projects actually spanned across 55 different journal teams at Frontier. So it was a very, very broad effort. Um, and as you can see in the slide, uh, several have exceeded millions of views and downloads. So we've had really an incredible impact. We've also been able to use this content to form the basis of a number of collaborations with, uh, with, with external partners. This is just one example I wanted to highlight, uh, showing how the articles that we published in, in these projects have been integrated into the transformation maps of the World Economic Forum. And I think another successful and innovative project that we conducted uh, at Frontiers was with the, in the funder space. Uh, this is absolutely worth mentioning. We, we provided a carefully curated and real-time catalog of grant opportunities as, as, they, were, as, as they were evolving um, in, in real time. And um, Daniel mentioned IRA. We, we, IRA was called to action to work with the funders to help them allocate the funds effectively uh, in terms of eva evaluating the, 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 the proposals. Now, I'm just going to step back uh, and kind of wrap this up and uh, to, to invite us to consider together what this mission looks like at a higher level, to give us a better sense of the magnitude of the achievement, I think. We can look at the editorial process and, uh, as a virtuous cycle of knowledge generation, as, as Miriam also mentioned, from the authors who submitted their research results to the topic editors, and especially right around, as you'll see on the, on, the, on, the, on the cycle, to the thousands of reviewers, we kept this virtuous cycle flowing during the, the whole coronavirus pandemic. There was no sense of external team or internal teams. We came together with our external editorial boards as one motivated, seamless partnership to address this issue. Um, and with the tens of thousands of people involved, as you can see on this, on, 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 on this graphic, there are way too many people to acknowledge. I'd just like to stress that um, there was one point was, tricky point was finding the right reviewers. I mean, that we saw that immediately that that was going to be a stress point. The people involved in the space were being pulled in 20 different directions at the same time. So we, we, we addressed this proactively by putting together a, re a review task force, which is composed of over 150 experts who volunteered to stand by and ensure the rigorous peer review. Um, the task force got the review done. They got the job done. And, um, and so now it is my great pleasure um, to uh, ask uh, Zizis to, to, to step up and tell us a little bit about uh, his perspective as a topic editor and as one of the leaders of the task force. So Zizis, the, the, uh, the microphone is, is yours. Thank you very much, Fred. It was uh, very quick to realize that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and also that this is once in a century event. So as a virologist, it was very clear to me, but I had to convince a lot of other people that this is important. And together we formed this very quickly, this very strong bond and the conviction that the way that we will overcome this is through solid scientific research. So this was the backbone of all the work that the science has to be good. It has to stand the test of time. And what was evident very quickly on was the, the waiver for the publication fees was a great catalyst in inviting articles, not just from the, the Northern Hemisphere, but throughout the entire world, but also the spectrum of scientific fields, as some are more or better funded than others. Um, 
the uh, so absolutely we are thankful to all the editors that uh, helped make this a reality and also to the staff at Frontiers that formed a very cohesive team being able to respond to us th multiple times throughout the day as we um, had to uh, review upwards of 800 manuscripts in uh, less than two months or three months. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to thank Camilla for the leadership and also Frontiers for providing the platform. And I think this has been a fascinating experience in bringing a lot of good science out for everybody and making it accessible. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Terrific, Zizis. Thank you so much for, for, for taking the time to join us this morning. It's, it's a, it's, it's, it's absolutely a, a great story and a great success story.